Hey there, Tom Straley here, and I want to share something with you. Um, we're going to experience this together. If you remember in my video I did a couple months ago with my son Alex about capos, uh, 12 strings had this issue. So here's here, here's my uh, my <laughs> my uh, my 12 string, and I'm not even going to try to tune it. But basically, one thing that I was having with a a 12, you're going to want a capo that you can adjust the tension on because the thing with a 12 string is the big strings are going to prevent the capo from pushing down the little strings and they're right next to each other. So I found that just even like when I capoed at the first fret, it, I think, oh good, it's great. Okay. And then you go string by string, dead, fine, dead, fine, little string dead, big string okay, little string dead, big string fine, 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 kind of okay. So then I, so when I went back with the Kai, uh, with the shove, sorry, do I, did I call it a Kaiser? No, you're just calling it shove. Shove. Okay, so I'm going to tighten the shove and then I'm going to close the shove and I'm going to say shove one more time. And now, it's still not tight enough. So I'm going to go a little tighter and it feels like it's going to break the guitar off. Okay, let me get a little closer to the, to the, to the um, fret. Okay. You, you might have to pitch and do some adjustment because you're putting it on so tight that it is going to probably drive the pitch up. So I was walking around the NAMM show in Anaheim and uh, just checking out all the booths and I went to the G7 booth and said, hey, I, uh, uh, I bought one of your capos to use in one of my videos. You should check it out. Uh, I actually really liked it. I'd never used the G7 before. And then another guy came over and said, oh my gosh, you're Tom Straley. I said, yeah. And he goes, I subscribed to your channel. He said, here, take some capos. So he gave me some capos and uh, he hadn't seen the video that you just saw. He hadn't seen it at that point. But uh, they created a capo, which I thought is a great idea, but I've not tried it. So it's still in the box. You can see this is, oh, it's trying to focus on my face. <laughs> Uh, so this is a Newport guitar cable 12 string with compensated string pad. Okay, so basically the bottom three strings have these little like diagonal cutouts because the, remember the issue was that the capo would push the thicker string down but it would mute the, the thinner string. So this is supposed to solve that problem so we'll see. Now this may not be a great test because I'm, this is my first time using it but let's give it a shot. All right, where's... And of course, it's always difficult to get things out of the box. There we go. Oh yeah, I see how it's got. Oh, and it's each one's. Of course, that makes sense that it would be a little bit less of a of a cutout because the strings are getting bigger. So let's see how this works. Okay, so I'm in tune. Well, according to my snark tuner here, I'm pretty much in tune. It's too is in tune as a twelve. What's the joke? Uh, 12 string players spend half their time tuning and half their time playing out of tune. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to throw this on at the first fret, which is the toughest fret for any capo. And I notice right away that it kind of naturally falls, in the, the, uh, the little bump there falls right naturally where it's supposed to fall. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to close this. Oh, that's too tight. Okay, loosen it. Oh, am I loosen it? No, okay, this is loose. All right, there we go. See, that seems really tight. I'm gonna loosen some more. Okay, that's not tight enough. Nice thing about this is once you get it to the right tightness, it should not have to adjust it. Okay, still maybe a little tighter. The key is to check it without playing a chord in front of it. See, now that string is not ringing out. So maybe they should have done one more. Here, let me try this. Tighten it a little bit more. I'm, I'm, just, I'm new to the G7 concept of the snap into play, so it feels always feels real tight to me, but it probably is normal. That's better. That's pretty darn in tune. I like it. 
it. I like it. I think it actually kind of works. And it's a cool looking capo. Not that I don't really care about aesthetics. Usually I'm just using capos here in my studio. No one here to watch me do it. Um, but it does seem to it does seem to do what it's supposed to do, which is cool. Let's try it further up the neck. Um, let's go to the fifth fret. Okay. Uh, a little sharp on the A. Or no. Yeah, I would ex always expect. Well, let me loosen the capo a little bit before I tune. string would buzz it's not buzzing yeah so I think I think it's working pretty good and there's always a potential for user error but I think it's a great idea it kind of solves that problem and they didn't pay me they gave me capo I don't know what this cost but probably 20 20 bucks or so on top. Let me tighten it a little bit more. Ooh, that really feels tight. And back it off the... I usually try to put the capo right up against the fret as close as I can get. Uh, obviously not on top of the fret, but just behind the fret because uh, even though that gives you a little less room here, I actually like it because it, if I put it too low, sometimes I feel like that fret here, I feel like that's a playable fret right here and I might accidentally put something in place. It's gonna buzz if you put it too far back. So always put your capo pretty close to the fret. And to me, that gives me a place to kind of hit my hand and I can, don't have to necessarily look at my hands. Pretty good. Again, I, if I'm if I'm capoing, live is always tough. <laughs> I don't know if, if I was playing live, if I would play a 12 string on more than one song anyway. I might pull it. You know, I don't think I'd do a whole set with on a 12 string. Uh, so if I had to capo the 12 string, it would just be capoed and ready to go. So anyway, I, I give this a I give this a thumbs up. Definitely, definitely. Um, would I buy one? Sure, definitely, because it does get rid of that problem. And I would just keep it in the case, because I have just a 112 string. Now, here's one caveat. Uh, my Rickenbacker 12 string, which I always thought was weird, but this is how they generally string them out of the factory, and I'm pretty sure it's how the Beatles had them strung. If you know, if somebody out there knows, correct me, but instead of being you know high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low on the 12 string, on the bottom four strings, Rickenbacker string it low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high. And it makes a difference when you're plucking, when you're picking notes on it, things like that. You can really notice the difference. I prefer low, high, uh, the high string closer to the ceiling, uh, the skinny string closer to the ceiling, because that's just what I'm used to. Uh, but when I pick up my Rickenbacker, uh, it's totally, it's the opposite. It feels a little weird at first, but it sounds right, uh, if that makes sense. And so this would this capo you couldn't use on it would actually do the opposite. So you they would need to make one opposite of this, which is probably easy for them to do, because uh, it's just an insert here um, that would be for <laughs> Rickenbacker 12 string. So anyway, uh, Tommy, if you're watching, <laughs> just a thought. wood look at that wood this Taylor 12 string that's so pretty it's a pretty guitar all right thank you for watching I'll talk to you soon God bless you guys bye